Let's talk about events in GDevelop. Events are used in GDevelop to help set up your game logic and give you direct control of things in your game. Everything from your game's score to player movement and enemy logic will mostly be done with events. So we're going to go through some examples and show you exactly how they work. For the first part of the video, we're going to be going through this example. So every game scene has an event sheet. You can add an event to your event sheet by clicking here, but because this would be hard to read like this, we're going to scale it up a little bit for the video. So you can think of event logic as if it were if then. So if the condition side is true, then the action side will happen. So if I preview this game, it's kind of hard to see because the art is so small. So I can click to add a condition, and then I can search for the condition at the beginning of the scene, and then click to add an action for camera zoom, and we'll set the value to 4. So now, at the beginning of the game scene, the camera will zoom in 4 times its default value. So now when we preview the game, it's much easier to see. But now let's apply some logic to an object. So we'll add a new event, and add a condition, and I'll search for key pressed. And in this case I'll use the up key, and then the action to add a force. I could just type in what I'm searching for, because I already know what I want, but I could also click on the player object to get the list of actions that work with that specific object. And then I can search through that list to find add a force. I'm going to set the speed in the x direction, so horizontal speed, to 0, and then the speed in the y direction to negative 50, which will make the plane go up. I'm going to set it to an instant force, so it's only applied when the key is pressed. And so now, if I press the up key, making that condition true, we'll add a force to the player object going upwards. Next I'm going to add a sub-event. So I'll add a new event, and then click to drag the event under an existing event. So I can add an action to this sub-event to rotate the player object at an angular speed of 50. And now when I preview the game and press the up key, the player moves up and rotates. And that's because this key press condition is true, which triggers the applied force action, and then after the force is applied, the rotate action is triggered. If I drag this event block back to being in line with the other events, it now has no conditions because it's not attached to the event above it. And if there are no conditions, it means the conditions are always true, which means that when the game is previewed, the rotation action will continuously run. And pressing the up key will only apply that upward force. The event sheet in GDevelop is very modular, and basically everything in it can be dragged, copied and pasted, moved and arranged in whatever way you want it to be. You can also click on any colored text in an action or condition to change how it works and what it's affecting. So we can change the key pressed to down, change the objects being affected by the action to enemies, and then change it to a positive number. And now when we preview the game, the enemies will move when we press the down key. And if you make a mistake, you can click on and delete individual actions or conditions or the entire event, and then undo or redo those changes with these buttons, or with Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y. For organization, you can add event groups, which are basically folders for your events, that you can name and put your events in, and you can add a comment, which is basically a note to yourself, or just titles that help you separate different parts of your logic. You can add a new event to your event sheet, either with the button to the left, the button in the top right corner, or with the right click drop down menu. But there are also other types of event blocks. The most commonly used other types of event blocks are for each object, for which you can select a certain object, and then that event will repeat for each instance of that object in the game. And then there's also the repeat event type for which you can specify how many times you want the event to repeat per frame. And speaking of per frame, 
The event sheet is actually read from top to bottom every frame of the game. So if your game runs at 60 frames per second, your conditions will be checked 60 times, and if they're true, your actions will trigger 60 times. So let's move over to the second example with some enemy logic so we can better explain the order of operations of events. So in this game scene, we just have a sprite object with a rhino in it, with two animations for running and hitting the wall, as well as a point on the rhino called collision to check to see if the rhino is hitting a wall. So here we have the event sheet with all of the rhino's behavior inside of an event group. So this is the logic for moving right, and this is the logic for moving left. So every frame that the object isn't flipped, this condition will be true, meaning the action to move the rhino to the right is being triggered. Then the engine continues down the list, checking to see if the rhino's animation is finished, which it isn't, and since that condition is false, the engine ignores the next condition and doesn't trigger the actions. But then it'll go down to the next sub-event and check to see if the rhino's collision point, the one added to the object, is inside of the wall. And if the rhino is currently running, that won't be true either, so the action doesn't trigger. But then still within the same frame, the engine will check to see if the rhino is horizontally flipped, and then because it isn't, the action won't trigger, and all of the sub-events will be ignored. As far as order of operation goes, just remember that every frame, the engine is checking the event sheet from top to bottom, starting with the conditions of each event as it goes, and if the conditions are true, then they trigger the actions one after another until all of the actions in that event have triggered. If you want to learn more about GDevelop, then be sure to click on this playlist.